Gas prices are going up again and traffic is getting worse. Well, at least in the Philippines. Hey, at least we're the top ranked country in the world for something, right? No. Anyway, even in the midst of all of that, one thing is for certain, we all need to get somewhere and we need fuel to do so. And to help you save on that precious, precious substance, here are some tips for you to follow. Number one, leave earlier. You know the saying, the early bird catches the worm? In our case, the earlier riser avoids all the other drivers. It's been a habit of ours on our video shoots to leave as early as possible. By doing so, we're able to get good fuel economy on our tight production budget and schedule. Not only do we get to our destinations earlier, but we also get to save a ton of gas that would otherwise be wasted idling in traffic. Look, try this. Leave just 10 minutes earlier than you usually do. Instead of hitting that snooze button, you'll hit less traffic on the way to your destination, saving you a lot of fuel in the process. I mean, Jack, Earl, and I know this very well because for one week straight, we beat the sun to our destination. <laughs> Wasn't the most fun, but hey, we saved a lot. Number two, plan your route. It goes without saying, and a theme will emerge here, but avoid traffic at all costs. It's common knowledge that roads like EDSA or main roads leading in and out of small towns will get congested, especially during rush hour. But there are alternative routes that you can take, like Mabuhay lanes to stay far away from the traffic, but still make it to your destination. Either that, or you can plan your route with an app like Waze or Google Maps. Better yet, if your car comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you get to see your route in real time. Heck, if you have to pay for an expressway or elevated tollway that'll save you time and gas for a small fee, of course, then yeah, why not? Number three, calm the fudge down. Akin na ang lisensya mo. No to road rage. Road rage is a thing, and so is being nervous in traffic. Be sure-footed, calm down, and go easy on the accelerator. The way that you accelerate to save fuel should be smooth and steady. Don't rush to get up to the speed limit. Instead, just ride the accelerator enough to climb up slowly. Don't get close to the red line on your tachometer. Instead, shift early, accelerate gently, and don't brake abruptly. Number four, use engine braking. Instead of using your brakes and idling the car, why not use gravity to keep the engine spinning? Modern cars will cut fuel while engine braking, which means that you'll get to save fuel and also brake pads and rotors. All that kinetic energy will keep the motor spinning at no additional cost. And if you're looking to save fuel, keeping that engine moving is probably for the best. Number five, ditch the extras. If your car is heavier than it needs to be, it will consume more fuel. Take out the trash and take out the unnecessary items in the back. Don't take out the emergency stuff, however, but do consider clearing out shoes, extra clothes, stuff that you don't need, trash, takeout containers, and maybe that even inflatable pool that you keep around for good measure. I don't know why, but yeah. Whatever it is, just keep what is essential to your car. Remember that the small things add up, so it's a good habit to always take stuff out whenever possible. Oh, on that note, if you have racks, hitches, or anything that also messes up the aerodynamics of the car, then it might be best to take those things out if you don't need them. Not only do these things add weight, they also make it harder for the car to hold high speeds. Think Kobe Bryant, with and without hair. Rest in peace, Mamba. Number six, this is gonna be difficult, but turn down the AC. Did you know that the air conditioning system in your car saps power out from the engine? And it's not a small amount, mind you. For home air conditioning units, those things are rated by horsepower. And the bigger the space for it needs to fill, the more horsepower is needed. It's the same deal with cars. Turn it down and let those horses go into moving the car rather than moving air inside the cabin. Don't, however, turn off the air conditioner and roll down the windows. No, 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 no. The air resistance will take a toll on your fuel economy. Some cars will automatically do this for you when you put them into their dedicated eco modes. The AC system will run at a lower rate, but to the benefit of more fuel efficiency. Like I myself, when I'm in the car, I like to make sure that it's just at the maximum of 22. You, Earl. 23. 23, not bad. Jack? Yes. What do you mean, yes? Because my car only has on or off. <laughs> no temperature. The thermostat is on. 
what's that doesn't work. It's either on or off. I forgot about that. Jack's car is 20 plus years old. And it's, it's carbureted. It's carbureted. <laughs> Whoops. Number seven, check your tire pressures. Make sure that your tire has the optimum pressure before setting out. Flat tires are heavy to turn and spin, which will impact the fuel economy. There is also the fact that the tire will have more rolling resistance while out on the road, if not properly inflated. Check your pressure. Air is free, but fuel isn't. Number eight, make sure your car is maintained. From oil changes to new spark plugs, ensuring that your car is in tip-top condition is part of the fuel-saving equation. Ensuring your car burns the fuel properly will also influence its efficiency. Aside from that, even things related to the chassis are also important. A good set of economy tires paired with proper wheel balancing and wheel alignment will also influence how much gas you eat on your long journey. Also, Going back to the AC system, if that's working over time because it's clogged, you can also expect your fuel efficiency to go down as well. Number nine, use fuel saving features. We've mentioned eco mode, but there are also other features in cars nowadays that allow you to save a few liters of fuel here and there. For example, the auto start stop. While a lot of us like to keep this feature off, myself included, studies have shown that it can save you quite a bit of fuel. There is an eco mode, use it. If there is a start stop, deal with it. Let the car help you save fuel. If you have one of those fancy hybrids, put it in EV mode. Either that or let the car decide. Number 10, fuel up properly. Now this tip is a mix of stuff. Number one, develop the habit of checking where fuel is cheapest and fill up there. If you can spend less on fuel, the better. And the more liters you get for your hard earned money, then good. That being said, avoid filling up from empty because without gas, you'll be fueling up at the next station and have no choice about it. Also, be sure to monitor gas price increases and fuel up accordingly. Follow our socials to get regular updates on fuel price increases as well. Finally, fill up with the right stuff. If your car takes 95, make sure that you're filling up with 95. If your car's manufacturer recommends 91, then it may be pointless to spend extra on the premium stuff. Know what I mean? Mom, I'm talking to you. And that's it. Hopefully you can take all or even just some of these tips with you on your next drive. For more information and more tips, subscribe to our YouTube channel or head on over to our website, autodeal.com.ph for more helpful tips and tricks. Plus the latest deals on cars in the Philippines. Thanks for watching everyone. Stay safe and see you soon.